They took him to Boston, to Kalamazoo, Chicago, Weehawken, and Washington, too. To Dayton, Ohio, St. Paul, Minnesota, to Wichita, Kansas, heroin capital of the world. <laughs> to Drake, North Dakota. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cardia. I am Anna. Anna. And Bridget Ann McDonald. Bridget Ann Kelly McDonald. And this here is Frank. <laughs> um, we're matching like the exact same shade. I'm never in on now, it. Huh. I, I didn't even know that we were matching today. Um, he's wearing a Philly shirt and I'm wearing a 76ers mm-hmm. shirt. Do you think it's like, is it like Kelly Green? Is there like a Sixers blue? I feel like there is because it's it's that kind of um, like when I grew up, uh, I lived in Somerdale, okay. which was a Philadelphia neighborhood. And our um, our little mascot was the was the Somerdale Patriot. And it's and like that was... little colonial guy. And he has like red, white and blue. Yeah. And it, it is this kind of blue. Yeah. It's Philly blue. It's gone now. And now they're the Oxford Circle Raiders, I think. Who isn't the Raiders these days? You know what I mean? What can you do? I'm Anna because it's her feast day, August 12th. I'm guessing 22 years ago, 21 years ago. It's always death with you, isn't it? <laughs> well, I had, I, if I was Christina yesterday, I, I can't be, I can't not be Anna today. Hey, shout out. Shout August out. 11th, August 12th. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. We, 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 uh, we are jealous. They are in the great paradise. I know. And we are here in miserable old. Summer no, now. we love both places. We're afraid of the transition, but <laughs> everything's fine. We're very afraid. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a Friday. We got through the week. Another week gone. Yeah. A, a new one be just beginning. <laughs> yeah. Um, Happy Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Yeah, for uh, you Orthodox Jewish faith people. Uh, the Judaism Sabbath is Saturday Christian Sabbath is Sunday. Yeah. Well, how does that all work? I never knew, but uh, I choose Sunday. I choose you. Um, How does that all... Wait, so in the Bible, there were seven days, right? Yeah. But when was the the, the week turned to seven days? Was Oh, wait, Julius Caesar was before... No. No one's before Genesis. How does that work? How does any of this work? He rested on the seventh day. So the Jews say he started on Sunday and ends on Saturday. You know, he's resting on Saturday. We Christians say, no, he started his work week on Monday and okay. he was finished on Sunday. Okay. Um, it's just words and, you know. Yeah. And it's just symbolic for symbolic. the seventh day. Yeah. To have these intervals of rest and yeah. Um, relief. Yeah. Well, I think that goes to show what we normally say when it's like, Oh, you worked on a Sunday. Is that bad? I think we had a whole podcast on Sabbath. And I think that's like a a good thing to point out. Like people are calling the seventh day different things, even in Abrahamic religions going to show. It's not about Sunday was, was blessed. It's the seventh day is blessed. Right. And, or whatever it is for you to just have that period of rest and reflection. And to be fair, the, you know, the reason we said, um, Shabbat Shalom right on Friday is because their their actual Sabbath is sundown Friday yes. to sundown Saturday. So they're going into the two days where Christians just tend to do the morning of Sunday to, you know, till, till Sunday. Till the morning of Sunday. Till, <laughs> no, no. Two hours of mass. We, and we also, Christian, well, Catholics at least, do offer mass on Saturdays at 5 p.m. For all the NFL players. I remember you were yesterday. Oh my you were, gosh, you're right. Yeah, you Why were didn't saying, I think of that? How did they not go to church? How do they go to church? And I said, they do. They have their own. They have the, their own. Beautiful thing. Um, Anything else? August um, 12th. It's National Milkman Day. Hey, Dad, if you're watching this, milkman. I miss you. I I, you I would have loved a milkman. You know a milkman? Because I love milk. But no, before we, your time? It was before my time. Now, milkman, what was the, like, what was the purpose that that couldn't be in the stores? <clears throat> were there stores? I don't think there were stores. You don't think there were stores? No. There were stores in, in Jesus' time. Where you, th- you, th- you think he was just going door to door? There were stores in Jesus' time. Uh, there was kind of. I mean, he, uh, did Joseph work at a carpenter? Did he go door to door knocking and saying, 
Can I build you a bench real quick? I'm sure, I had a workshop. If my grandmother was alive, um, she'd be, <laughs> she would be whatever a person would be um, if they were born in 1903. So we could ask her because she she had a milkman. Um, the stores they had. Um, remember when we were in Spain and um, there, we had to go to like separate stores. Like there was a big supermercado, yeah. but but you know you'd go to like the vegetable corner you know like yeah um, yeah in the morning you'd you'd go out to to like the the butcher yeah so no there wasn't a store like that had like the case now that's the other thing okay i i think i figured it out refrigeration refrigeration yeah each person had an ice box which was melting ice the whole time how would one store hold everyone's milk yes that's so he had a cold truck he had a cold truck drop it to you dropping the milk off for you you would cold it and you would buy as much, I guess, as you had it ability would, to cool. It, it would be financially irresponsible to have a milk store. Milk goes bad. Yeah. It's like you need to be hand delivering this. Right. Interesting. Yeah. So where'd you get the eggs? From your chickens. <laughs> From the your chickens, chickens have come home to roost. Where, where do you think you got eggs? No, oh, I guess not in the cartons back then. Well, no, my family is from the city, so they didn't have chickens. Well, that's what I was sort of asking. I'm guessing s- some kind of farmer's market, like what we what we call a farmer's market. They probably just called it a market, like yeah, like down in um down in Society Hill, they have like, down by Penn's Landing, but across you know on our side, yeah, um, you know they have this this overhang, this kind of alley type of, I don't know, that used to be all the sellers with um, the uh, with the cobblestone street. Yeah, yeah, my great grandmother my great-grandmother whatever she used to have a vegetable what stand there <laughs> oh yeah yeah um and so there must have been also f- egg stands because yeah. i don't think you don't have to refrigerate eggs right mm. we do but i don't think you have no to. of course not right because they're they're made outside yeah but th- but they tell us to keep the refrigerator we're getting deep into um, animal husbandry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We need to get a, a guest on the show. Yeah. An expert. It'd probably be easy if we went to like Lancaster or something. Yeah, get an Amish person mm-hmm. on the show. That'd be pretty cool. Are they allowed? What? We would hide we, the camera. We'd, we'd have to get a Mennonite. Yeah. Hide the camera. Yeah. yeah. And just be like, what about eggs? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, There was other holidays, but I don't think anything was important. Yeah, like know. there's like a ooey gooey something butter cake yeah. or something yeah butter cake that's kind of locally famous but yeah you mentioned some and i i don't remember them sorry hey don't even worry about it doing anything fun this weekend yes i'm going to the wildwood new jersey tattoo convention really mm-hmm. wildwood new jersey mm-hmm. oh man they're having a big union party down there this weekend yeah i'll be there you'll be there mm-hmm. the local 155 yeah <laughs> Yeah, represent. Yeah, I support. How do you feel about unions? I support them. You support the unions? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't have an opinion on it. I like I like the concept, but I I support them. Um, in in the old days, in in the Norma Ray days, you know, um, the, the the unions had to be formed to because everyone was being taken advantage yeah. of, and they formed these unions, and everyone was protected. Then a time passed where, um, it wasn't. People weren't really being taken advantage of. Yeah. We always, workers have always been taken, but not so bad. And at that point, my mind started to change. Like, oh, like, I guess the time for this has passed. You know, maybe we don't need to be such aggressive employees. But look what happened. They started to really take advantage of workers yeah. and squeeze them to death. So now people are unionizing again, Starbucks yeah. and so forth. And, and Starbucks is fight. It's crazy to me. I'm for it. How much Starbucks is fighting back on and the is, unions? It's and- not embarrassed. And it's not, is, 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 what's the word if it starts with a B? Bra- brazen? Brazen. Mm-hmm. The, the bra- like they're opening new stores. Yeah. To be non-union stores to, to uh, steal their business from the union stores. Yeah. It's. And, yeah. I just saw, uh, I just saw on TikTok or something that the, the, the uh, Starbucks manager fired the union worker yeah. and in solidarity all of the workers walked out. Which is what unions do. Which That's is what, what unions yeah. do. And um Yeah. I say all's fair until it's not. And and we they yeah. are taking adva- big advantage of workers. Yeah. Big advantage of workers. Big and, advantage. Uh, <laughs> and, um, well, that, and that's the thing about like jobs like Starbucks, is, right? Like I feel like 
they're like trying to get away with it like because i feel like union jobs in our minds are only blue collar jobs because that's always been the right. jobs of the masses yeah right like we never in you know we're talking about the past and stuff in the past there was only a certain type of place that the general population worked and then there was white collar people right. who were the minority right but if you weren't if you weren't a businessman or owned a business or you were working a trade, you were a police officer, you were working for the government, like, well, yeah. the, not the government, but you know what I mean? Yeah. And so that's where the unions were formed with the masses. Only recently do we have this mass people jobs like the Starbuckses. There there was exactly there was nothing to compare it to exactly. back then. Exactly. You right. had local, you had little mom and pop shops. You were, and right. So your factory bodegas. that made this shirt yeah. and then the guy was not giving you, you know, your right wages or it was too hot in there or something. The union would be like, hey, hey, Bill Smith, yeah. change your ways. Now it is that 1% billionaire situation who has absolutely no connection yeah. or concept of the people who aren't getting medical, aren't getting time off, aren't yeah. getting, you know, a, a pee break like Amazon. You yeah. Because like, like I, I think a lot of, Especially young kids, um, not young kids. I'm saying like 18, like this, like younger age, um, are getting taken advantage of in, in industries that, like I said before, the only food places you'd go would be mom and pop, and it would be ridiculous to unionize. Right. But when you're out of Starbucks, you realize there is like when you realize there's a million of us, yeah, that are all being taken advantage of by this multi-billion-dollar corporation. Yeah. And um, so it's time. It's like we got to move with the times now. It's those kind of jobs, the McDonald's, the the yeah, the, Wal I hope, I the hope, Walmart, I, uh, Walmarts. Yeah, the, yeah. You, you always hear about those employees. Like these just, are these are the, the almost the new version of the factory. It's just scary though, because like I said, you could shame the old factory owner, you know, yeah. Mister um, Jones, or you could bring attention to the fact of what he's doing to hit, to his people. Or I'll, I'll tell you what you can do, and that's what always worked with the unions in these businesses. Mm -hmm. If if the 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 Philly Teamsters, right? So that's a, that's a union where they're the transportation. Mm -hmm. So something as simple as like, I don't know, driving like a Coca-Cola truck and dropping it off. You're in like the Teamsters union. Mm -hmm. um, when they disrespect the employees or something, they stop driving. You know, right. like we're all going on strike. Right. Um, logistics gets messed up in the city of Philadelphia. Yeah. The businesses are directly affected because it was like that sort of smaller scale. Yeah. With these Starbucks and stuff, they have the full ability and the financial resources to say, we don't care. That's, the, that's go, go on strike. Well, that's the, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's the scary I, thing. I was doing a long, long form version of it. I know. <laughs> and I, I know, appreciated I know what it. You're doing. I appreciated it. Yeah. So, so, I was, so what do we do? I don't. That's what I'm afraid of. Give unto Caesar that is Caesar's, or do we stand up and fight? But we, of course we stand up and fight. But if everyone doesn't stand up and fight, they the 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 one percent looks at the working class as just grinding out you know the the ground beef out of the the thing like you know once i i asked this uh tattoo tattoo woman who had a shop and um <laughs> that's so funny this is the way, the way you said it is um, it a tattoo shop yeah and i said oh wow like you can make a living at, at, at this was years ago. I, had, so I understand your, it, your yeah. brain was. <laughs> yeah. And she said, yeah, developing. someone turns 18 every day. Like, yeah. you know, people always want tattoos. Um, it, It's not like, well, how many tattoos can you get? It's not how many tattoos can you get? It's how many people want tattoos. Yeah. Right. But anyway, this is the problem with the Amazons and stuff. They can totally grind out the workers who say, I'm not going to take this anymore because the new people who see Ooh, yeah. uh, sign a sign on bonus. Ooh, hi, hi, yeah. and and they go into the into the grinder with this unending supply of people yeah. who are willing. They don't and, have to change, and, and just the the globalness, right? Like unions, like there is like the unions are pretty. Um, I think they are uh, cross nationwide, like the same ones. But I'm saying it's generally like in cities, like grouping. Mm -hmm. So you could be in your factory. And you can all be like, let's stand up and fight. Yeah. When you're in a Starbucks. No, you're right. When you're in a Starbucks, you're working with four other people. Yeah. Right? So it's like there's people in California that's yeah. making the same company money. Right. So it's not that same kind of let's all walk out. It's the four of you are going to walk out. Right. And the other 
20,000 employees or not. I remember. I don't remember the milkman, but I do remember the air traffic controllers strike. Oh. Yeah, they do, you remember the, do you remember the writer strike? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I do. Nothing on TV. No good movies. That That's how reality TV started? I don't know. <laughs> I, I wonder. I, don't, I, I think reality TV does still need writers. Maybe not. Maybe just thinkers. The writer's strike. The writer's strike. It's uh the do you know what that is called their union the SAG or something just, no the, that's the actors yeah the actors have the one screen screenwriters guild yeah or yeah. something yeah okay but they were taking taking advantage of them you can imagine I, I can see how it happened the writers are the unsung once again heroes. but and once again uh, uh a boss saying a million people would want to be in your seat writing yeah. for Cheers or whatever you know and then that's I mean and once that's how things get done they went on the strike and. You're, they were hands were tied nothing good was coming out and it's like all right fine we'll pay you more speaking of people who write entertainment dr seuss <laughs> oh you know what this blue is also kind of similar to dr seuss blue um what's up guys it's friday and every friday we showed you the books yesterday as a little homage to, yeah. to what's going to happen today it's dr seuss friday we do it every single week we read a Dr. Seuss book. I read a Dr. Seuss book. You and Frank listen. And before you say that's childish, it's not. And um, it's fun. But Dr. Seuss is a very smart guy. Yeah. Um, He was, I don't know if he was part of the writer's union, but should have been. Should have been the president of it. I went back then. I don't know. I don't, I don't know either. But um, we read a Dr. Seuss book and we... Get something out of it. Yeah, there's a lot get of a lot out there's of a lot of silly characters like you know yeah. Horton the elephant, and there's rhymes, and it, it's fun. But we've read about like 25 books by now, and there's meaning in it, and I, I think it's important that children get meaning that way. Yeah, I think it's important that we go back and get it. And I do. I, I brought this up last week, and I really was thinking about it. I do like it as an exercise. For the Bible, especially with the like, we always kind of get caught up on some aspects of the Bible. Yes, we talked about it yesterday. It's like, well, how how am I going to compare it to myself? Like, right. And Doctor Seuss is such an extreme example where it's like, it's all rhymes. It's very silly, but if you take it all and analyze it, it has a deep meaning. And and so it's almost practice for the Bible. But today's about Doctor Seuss. So today we're reading a new book. Um, I like this color. What color would you call that? Oh, that's like seafoam green or something. Yeah, seafoam green. That's a good call. Um, we're reading Horton Hatches the Egg. Whoa, Horton makes a comeback. I believe we read Horton and the Quagger Bug. Did we ever read Horton Hears a Who? No. Interesting. We didn't. Um, On the list. I never even saw the movie. Me neither. Wait, did we not? Did we not? I'll look back. I remember because I remember saying, um, oh, I always hear this is about climate change. Did I not say that? Climate change is Lorax. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> okay. It's because they made a movie about that yeah. too. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I was getting a little nervous <laughs> okay. there. All right. Is this a long one? Oh, man. I got to get right to it. Oh, boy. We got so busy in cut union out, talk. Yeah. Cut out the union. No. <laughs> Never. No. <laughs> Side Maisie, a lazy bird hatching an egg. I'm tired and I'm bored and I've kinks in my leg. From sitting, just sitting here day after day. It's work how I hate it. I'd much rather play. I'd take a vacation, fly off for the rest. If I could find someone to stay on my nest. If I could find someone, I'd fly away free. Then Horan the elephant passed by her tree. Hello, called the lazy bird, smiling her best. You've nothing to do and I do need a rest. Would you like to sit on the egg in my nest? The elephant laughed, why of all silly things, I haven't feathers and I haven't wings. Me on your egg? Why, that doesn't make sense. Your egg is so small. Ma'am, I am so immense. Tut tut, answered Maisie, I know you're not small, but I'm sure you can do it, no trouble at all. Just sit on it softly, you're gentle and kind. Come be a good fellow, I know you won't mind. I can't, said the elephant. Please, begged the bird. I won't be gone long, sir, I give you my word. I'll hurry right back. Why, I've, I'll never be missed. Very well, said the elephant, since you insist. You want a vacation, go fly off and take it. I'll sit on your egg and I'll try not to break it. I'll stay and be faithful. I mean what I say. Toodaloo, sang, sang out Maisie and fluttered away. 
Hmm, the first thing to do, murmured Horton, let's see. The first thing to do is to prop up this tree and make it much stronger that has to be done. Before I get on, I must weigh a ton. Then carefully, tenderly, gently he crept up the trunk to the nest where the little egg slept. Then Horton the elephant smiled, now that's that. And he sat and he sat and he sat and he sat. And he sat all that day and he kept the egg warm. And he sat all that night through a terrible storm. It poured and it lightened, it thundered, it rumbled. This isn't much fun, the poor elephant grumbled. I wish she'd come back because I'm cold and I'm wet. I hope that Maisie bird doesn't forget. But Maisie by this time was far beyond reach, enjoying the sunshine way off on Palm Beach. And having such fun, such a wonderful rest, decided she'd never go back to her nest. So Horan kept sitting there day after day, and soon it was autumn. The leaves blew away. And then came the winter, the snow and the sleet. The icicles hung from the trunk and his feet. But Horton kept sitting and said with a sneeze, I'll stay on this egg and I won't let it freeze. I meant what I said and I said what I meant. An elephant's faithful 100%. So poor Horton sat there the whole winter through. And then came the springtime with troubles anew. His friends gathered round and they shouted with glee. Look, Horton, the elephant's up in the tree. They taunted, they teased him, they yelled how absurd. Old Horton the elephant thinks he's a bird. They laughed and they laughed, They, th then they all ran away, and Horton was lonely, he wanted to play. But he sat on the egg and continued to say, I meant what I said and I said what I meant, an elephant's faithful, 100%. No matter what happens, this egg must be tended, but poor Horton's troubles were far, far from ended. For while Horton sat there, so faithful, so kind, Three hunters came sneaking up softly behind. He heard the man, men's footsteps. He turned with a start. Three rifles were aiming right straight at his heart. Horton really gets the worst. He does, yeah. Did he run? He did not. Horton stayed on that nest. He held his head high and he threw out his chest. And he looked at the hunters as much as to say, Shoot if you must, but I won't run away. I meant what I said and I said what I meant. An elephant's faithful 100%. But the men didn't shoot, much to Horton's surprise. They dropped th their three guns and they stared with wide eyes. Look, they all shouted, can such a thing be? An elephant sitting on top of a tree? It's strange, it's amazing, it's wonderful, new. Don't shoot him, we'll catch him, that's just what we'll do. Let's take him alive while he's terribly funny. We'll sell him back home to a circus for money. And the first thing he knew, they had built a big wagon with ropes on the front for the pullets, pullers to drag in. The, they dug up his tree and they put it inside, with Horton so sad that he practically cried. We're off, the men shouted, and off they all went, with Horton unhappy 100%. Up out of the jungle, up into the sky, up over the mountains 10,000 feet high. Then down, down the mountains and down to the sea, went the cart with the elephant, egg nest and tree. Then out of the wagon and onto a ship, but over the ocean and oh, what a trip. Rolling and tossing and splashed with the spray, and Horton said day after day after day, I meant what I said and I said what I meant, but I, oh, I am seasick, 100%. Aww. <laughs> That's the all part? <laughs> yeah. Seasick. After bobbing around for two weeks like a cork, they landed at last in town of New York. All the shore, the men shouted, and down with a lurch, when Horton the elephant, still on his perch, tied onto a board that could just scarcely hold him, Bump, Horton landed, and then the men sold him. Sold to the circus, then week after week, they showed him to people at 10 cents a peak. They took him to Boston, to Kalamazoo, Chicago, Weehawken, and Washington, too. To Dayton, Ohio, St. Paul, Minnesota, to Wichita, Kansas, heroin capital of the world, <laughs> to Drake, North Dakota. And everyone, everywhere thousands of folks flocked to see and laugh at the elephant up in the tree. Poor Horton grew sadder the farther he went, but he said as he sat in the hot, noisy tent, I meant what I said, and I said what I meant, and elephants faithful 100%. Then one day the circus show happened to reach a town way down south, not so far from Palm Beach, and dawdling a long way up high in the sky, who, of all people, should chance to fly by? But that old good-for-nothing bird, runaway Maisie, still on vacation and still just as lazy, and spying the flags and the tents just below, she sang out, why fun, why, I'll go to the show. And she swooped from the clouds through an open tent door, 
Good gracious, gasped Maisie. I've seen you before. Poor Horton looked up with his face white as chalk. He started to speak, but before he could talk, there rang out the noisiest, ear-splitting squeaks from the egg that he had sat on for 40, 51 weeks. A thumping, a bumping, a wild, alive scratching. My egg, shouted Horton, my egg, why it's hatching. But it's mine, screamed the bird when she heard the egg crack. The work was all done, now she wanted it back. It's my egg, she sputtered, you stole it from me. Get off of my nest and get out of my tree. Poor Horton backed down with a sad, heavy heart. But at the very instant, the egg burst apart. And out of the pieces of red and white shell from the egg that he'd sat on so long and so well, Horton, saw, Horton the elephant saw some that whiz. It had ears and a tail and a trunk just like his. And the people came shouting, what's all this about? They looked and they started with their eyes popping out. Then they cheered and they cheered and they cheered more and more. They'd never seen anything like it before. My goodness, my gracious, they shouted my word. It's something brand new. It's an elephant bird. And it should be, it should be, it should be like that. Because Horton was faithful. He sat and he sat. He meant what he said and he said what he meant. And they sent him home happy 100%. Fun. I love it. <clears throat> I really like it. I love this book. Um. Yeah. Because, like, before, I think we talked about other things about, like, being taken advantage of. Right. I think there was, like, Fidwick. Yes. He was taken advantage of. And so I was, like, sort of leaning to that. And I'm, like, yeah. in the beginning, and I'm, like, oh, he's being so faithful. But right. is it for naught? And the little twist at the end, it came out. I was really surprised. It came out an elephant. So he slept with a bird. No. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> And it's not a true elephant. It was elephant bird. Yeah, it was elephant had bird, bird legs, and it it had fly ears. Yeah, but it was mostly elephant. Maybe it was Dumbo. Yeah, it's like elephant with wings. Yeah, and maybe it like sometimes the way a baby looks at birth, it changes. So like it might actually get elephant legs. I'm serious. It might get elephant legs later on. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, yeah, but the point is, it like yeah, I like it. Anything yeah. So yeah, sure. Okay, uh, I'm going to say number one, Doctor Seuss, so inventive, so creative, so you know, has all these. Um, imaginative ideas. Why did he use the same name, Maisie, as remember the little girl who had a flower uh, pot yeah. on her head was Maisie? And Daisy like, had Maisie. Yeah, and this is Maisie the bird. I don't know. Maybe he knew someone and he was like giving them a little. Or it's rhymes. Shout out. Maisie, Maisie lazy, hazy, Daisy. Lazy of Dr. Seuss Crazy. to do that. No. Uh, but besides that, um, I love it because um, I, I, I felt this connection of like if somebody – is starts something yeah and then you come on board and you give it your all and you're completely committed to it and you do you know so much um work and dedication for it you know that person might try to come in later in your life and say like yeah. you know like i you know the twins with um zuckerberg or something you know what yeah. I mean? like wait i was there in the beginning or you know that was originally mine and and he's the one that put in the, the, the three years plus or whatever um and 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 thankfully it's a it's a good ending book where he does get to claim it and yeah. and it claimed him yeah you know and that's okay so let me say that real quick sorry my uh, my am i um what's that word uh filibusting <laughs> <laughs> um i remember when the, his friends were making fun of him because yeah. they were like why is he in a tree he looks so crazy yeah um i was thinking people may make fun of you because they don't know what you're doing yeah you know yeah. and he had a purpose and he was dedicated and he mm. said i'm you know i don't break my promise so he's saying in the tree and the so i was just thinking like sometimes people you might make fun of someone or someone might make fun of you but you don't have the whole story you don't really know what yeah is going on yeah no definitely yeah and i think it's it's love the ending but it's just that idea that yeah doing something and I think another big part of it is he didn't know the ending, right? Like, right. he was just living his life according to his moral code and stuff. And it's like, when you stick to that, it's it comes back around. Yeah. And it's like, you are you're rewarded for it. For his faith. For his faith. Right? He was too big to sit in the tree on the nest to act like a bird. He was an elephant. He said, I can't do that. Yeah. He had faith. The bird said, you can. He had faith and he did it. And he was successful. Yeah. Um, so that part. Yeah. Two. Yeah. And, um, you know, just a little final thing of spirituality, you know, like I think a lot of things that we want in life, you know, that we pray for and stuff, I, I, mm -hmm. I often find it more like this, right. Where it's like, all you have to, you have to have faith and like, you know, long form faith and 
it even goes along to that like um understanding it's the um do not lean on your own understanding right because yes try to, if you explain to him that that's going to be an elephant it wouldn't make sense right but it's like you're doing it for just the faith and, and the right. kindness but you're sticking to it and then that's we talked about on wednesday's podcast we talked about like what is like is do we have free will if if you know god has a plan for us right and it's like we still have free will but it, it takes your faith and to just trust in in, in that and then yeah. it comes back to you sometimes it, he was just doing it morally and that also go, like goes to the comes back tenfold right yeah. like he was doing it just for the bird he's been a good person but right. it's like oh they're, they're, i wish i could just like bring up a bible verse right now but it's yeah. like you know it's just that idea of when you bless someone you get tenfold blessings yes. back and yes. it's like that's what this was it's yeah. like he wasn't being selfish he wasn't looking for an no he was you know doing good to someone and then he was returned it tenfold right and that's uh it's the name of the game but yeah. and then i have any final thoughts i don't No. all right guys that <laughs> is dr seuss friday um thank you for being here with us go have fun this weekend um eat some ooey gooey cake butter cake eat some butter cake get your milk peace